God's going to be doing some stuff tonight. Amen. I'm so excited to be here. I only have a short amount of time, so I know that we've, we've, we've laughed together, we've danced together, we've we, we praised together, and, and I, need, I need us to just dive in tonight. And if you have your, um, your Bibles here, I want you to open to Mark. You're like, oh, she's going in. Oh, yeah, buckle in, baby. We're going, okay? So um, if you have your Bibles, some of you do, great. We're going to be, we're gonna be um, hanging out the whole night on one specific passage. It's in Mark, Mark 10, 17 um, through basically 22. Um, maybe a little bit further on to that. And I love Mark's gospel. Uh, growing up Catholic, I didn't know a lot about scripture, so I want to give you a quick highlight of, of why I love specifically Mark's gospel. Okay, so John, awesome gospel. Um, each, each writer has a different kind of nuance and how it looks at scripture, how he breaks open this person of Jesus. And John is like this dual, he, he talks about the dualism of God, the, the highs and the lows, this great mystic, this deep revelation. Like he's the kid in high school that walks in and he's like the poet that says like deep stuff all the time and you have no idea what he's saying, but it's like blows your head open. Like John, right? Like just deep mystery of the Lamb of God. And then, and then you got Luke, okay? And Luke's like coming and he's the only one in scripture that does the Magnificat. He has a great um, love for women and the marginalized, okay? And he talks about the spirit-filled gospel for the poor. All throughout there's this lacing of the small and the poor. And, and man, Luke's awesome. And then there's Matthew, okay? And Matthew is broken up into these five long discourses. And his audience for Matthew is more for the Jews. In the Old Testament, um, they had a lot of epic things. And, and like I call Matthew like a ninja. Because all throughout Matthew are these cool, amazing Old Testament references that he throws in just kind of like ha, ha, ha. But really it's the whole Old Testament being fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The old, like the Moses and Christ coming as the new Moses. Christ coming as fulfillment and the authority of the church being fulfilled in these awesome lengthy teachings. And Matthew is awesome. And then there's Mark. I love me some Mark, man. Mark, he's like for your ADD people in the room, right? <laughs> right? Mark is awesome because Mark, he doesn't have the long discourses like Matthew. He comes on the scene. It's fast-paced. He uses the word immediately more than any other um, of the Gospels. Like it's fast-paced. He comes in. Jesus is like, <laughs> comes in. He's like raising people from the dead. He's curing people. Things are happening left and right, and no one knows who he is. In fact, a lot of times Mark in his gospel, he tells people not to tell others that he's the Messiah. It's like, what? They call it um, the messianic secret. It's like awesome. And Jesus comes, and it's like halfway through Mark's gospel that the, the disciples who are kind of moronic, like in Mark's gospel more than all the other gospels, like, they're, like, the, like his, his apostles aren't getting it. They're like, what do you mean? Right? Until the end, right? He, he moves, they're kind of getting that you're the Messiah until the very end when he's on the cross. And blood and water is poured out his, of his side. And a centurion, who's a Roman guard, falls to his knees and sees the glory of the Savior. And he says, truly, this is the Son of God, like this is the Savior of the universe, like this is where we're going tonight. This is, the, this is where we're going. I want you to snapshot this in your heart right here, this, this image of saying, God, that you're the Savior. Um, I, we are all praying in the back room, and I know I'm going heavy. You're like, oh, you were funny this afternoon, and you're like, you're going there because, listen, guys, like God is going to do something tonight. And it's not because of my talk. The Savior has come. Okay, and just pray with me for a minute. Heavenly Father, I, I pray um, that you, you come with your mighty power as Savior tonight, that you would open our eyes to see the glory of what you have in store. Amen? Amen. Um, if you go ahead and throw that first slide up. Um, these are my shoes. They're not. Um, okay, so do you ever have those moments? I know we're just jumping in. Do you ever have those moments that you kind of don't know what to do in life? You're like, yes, yes, okay. So growing up, I was the youngest kid of, of five. I was the baby. And my older sister always was the one that went to my mom because I had a mom that always had all the answers. Does anyone have a mom like that? 
Yeah, some of you love her, some of you don't, it's okay. And so my mom was someone who always had the answers, and my sister was the girl that always went to mom and like asked her what to do and she did it, and I was the girl that never went to mom because I was too cool for school for mom. And so I remember when I went to college, I had this epic moment where I didn't know what I was gonna do, and I was frustrated. My dad had a flow chart, and it didn't help. And like people were telling me what I should do, and I was confused, and I didn't know what to happen. And, and I went up to my mom, and I'm like, mom, and I finally had the courage, like I'm gonna ask mom, you know, finally. And I poured out my heart, and my mom and her beautiful, momism stopped and was like, well, you're just going to have to pray about that and make that decision on your own. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like my whole life you tell me what to do. Like just tell me what to do, right? Do you ever have those moments? Like we have all these questions. Let me hear you say the word questions. No, no, no. Let me hear you say the word questions. Oh, I love it. We live in a world of questions, right? And a world of, of answers with those questions, right? So I don't know if you're on Pinterest. Some of you might be on Pinterest, some of you are not. It was amazing in their day. I was thinking about all the questions that we have in life, all the things that we, we, we want to know. And the beauty of our culture is that we have Google and Wikipedia and a million ways to find those answers. Amen? So on the Pinterest, just at any moment, right, three secret fashion tips. This is all 101 ways to improve your relationships. Yeah, yeah. Right, 50 things to know to prepare for college. How to take your perfect Instagram. These are true. I'm not making this up, right? Biceps, five ways to increase your swag. That's right, gentlemen. Don't read that blog. It doesn't work. So, but, but we have these, like, right, all these answers all around us. In fact, um, there's this, uh, sh I don't know if you've heard of this, these talks called TED Talks. Have heard of that? Yeah. They're, they're pretty, um, they're, wow, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, I'm taking my time. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the clock, but I got a long way to go. These TED Talks, um, these TED Talks are great. They're, they're, they talk about amazing topics of, of intrigue and kind of cover it in a short amount of time. And I was researching what the biggest TED Talks, do you know what the biggest TED Talks are? It's five ways to find happiness. Five ways. I'm like, really? That's awesome. All of them, the top ones, and that's what we desire. Uh, Coca-Cola right now has an ad for the, the World Cup, and what it says is open happiness. Because that's what we want, the questions of our heart. We want to know what to do to find happiness. Where am I going to go to have all these feelings fulfilled in my life? And I don't know what you struggle with in your life. I don't know what questions you wrestle with at night. I mean, Father Dave told that amazing story about um, his friend who was in China who thought art would be her solution, and it wasn't. And we all know that feeling. And the beauty is tonight, I don't know what your questions are, whether it's how to get rid of my acne or, or when am I going to find a boyfriend or, 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 or why do I feel so alone? Or, or God, are you really there? I don't, I don't know your questions, but I do know the answer for tonight. God is. God is the answer for tonight. You guys, we got to get this as we're going deeper. We've been talking about this all weekend. They were passing the baton, talking about how God is. We talked about earlier, yes, that God came and appeared to Moses and he said, I am. Right? The God of all the universe. But this is just a distant God. This God has made himself visible in the person of Jesus Christ. It says in John's gospel, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was... I am. Do you know that he said that? He, he used the Greek um, ego. Um, this is falling. He uses the same Greek term that he uses in the Old Testament, right? Although it's Hebrew. But he uses the same Greek term. When they said, I am, they were about to stone him because they knew that he was saying, I am, the, I am God. The God that made the Ni Niagara Falls. The God that created the stars and keeps our, our heartbeats moving at time. Like, I am. And that's the God we're going to today. The beauty of the story that we're going to be unpacking, right? The story is that this rich young man slides in to ask Jesus a single question, right? Tell me what to do. And he wants a solution. He wants an answer. He doesn't want a savior. He's looking for a problem to be solved instead of a person to be found. And that's a huge part of what we're going to be talking about tonight. And there's three points that I'm going to be breaking open to you. Number one, the deception of the external. 
And for you youth ministers, I would encourage you to write this down. These are great small group questions as you unpack what the heck does she talk about. The, the deception of the external, right? The demand, number two, of the internal. The demand for our human hearts and the need for a savior. I mean, unpacking all three of those, right? Because the story starts off and Jesus comes, Jesus, Jesus comes up and he says this, right? The, the kid slides in and he says, what do I have to do to, to, to earn eternal life, right? What do I have to do? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God. Hold up. So, okay, I, if I were following Jesus, I'd be a little bit annoyed because he always asks these questions, right? Somebody asks him a question, he asks one back. <laughs> have you ever heard of that? Have you ever seen that? Where are you going? Why? You know, like Jesus will like respond back. Politicians do that, right? You ask a politician, like, what do you think of the Iraq war? Let me answer that question with a question, you know? Like if you see politicians, can you imagine if you did that in the classroom? Like, what's the answer to number 43? Well, Mrs. Sanders, let me answer that question with a, with a question, right? How much wood does wood, you know, like whatever, right? No, you can't do that. That's weird. But why does Jesus do this? Jesus does this, right, because he's trying to get to the deeper meaning behind the question. Why do you call me good? He says, good teacher, why do you call me good when only God is good? Because he knows that this kid is coming in and he doesn't see him as a savior. He sees him as a teacher. He sees him as someone who's just going to solve his problems. Give me the answer. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. And how many times is that in our life? How many times do we come here to the Stupidville conference, right? Saying, like raising our hands and saying all these things, wanting answers, but not necessarily wanting him. Wanting the signs Right? Wanting him to fix the problems in our lives, but not necessarily wanting him. And I remember just recently, I was, um, I do a lot of ministry, and I was traveling, and uh, I went to this conference, and God was doing some amazing things. Amazing things all around. And there was a young woman that was there who had a gift of prophecy, which is a gift where you can um, really hear the words of God. And amazing things were happening, and I got jealous, because I was like, God, I want you to show up. I want you to start doing some profound things in my life. And I went up to this young woman, this woman, and I was, I was discouraged. And she said to me, um, she's like, oh, Mary. She was Hispanic. She was sassy. I loved it. She was like, Mary. She was like, and I was, she was like, oh, no, no, no. She's like, you, oh, look at you. She's like, I'm like, God doesn't do anything. Why doesn't he do this stuff in my life? Why doesn't he fix this stuff? Do you ever feel that way? She's like, oh, no. Oh, she goes, you, oh, you. She's like, you want, you want to touch people and they fall down. And I'm like, yeah. You want to be like Jesus. And I'm like, yeah. You know, like I kind of do. And she's like, no, 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 no. She said to me this, Jesus does not want to give you the 4th of July. Right, epic, because this is the 4th of July weekend. Jesus doesn't want to give you the, she didn't know what that meant. She's like, 4th of July, do you understand freedom? I'm like, I know what you mean. Jesus does not want to give you the 4th of July. Jesus wants to give you Easter. Meaning, Jesus doesn't want to come here and just give you some great signs and just solve your problems and do some bang and then tomorrow nothing changes. Jesus wants to come into your heart and resurrect the dead. Wants to come into those places of your suffering. Wants to come into those places of your insecurity. Those places where you don't know him and bring you to life. There's something deeper that God wants to do with you this weekend and sometimes we don't see it. We're just like this kid that comes in wanting answers and I'm saying it for someone because it's me too. It's me too. No, no, no. I know that we're all getting excited here, but you guys, I know, I know, I know that we're all excited. Testify, yes, but I need us to hear this. I'm not trying to shut you down. I love you. I love you. I love you. But we got to hear this. Because this rich man is me. Do you guys hear this? This rich man is us. He comes in looking like God just took my stuff. He doesn't see who he is. We don't see who he is. We come to these conferences and I do it too. Yes, Lord, we say our prayers, we want it good, and we walk away and, and like we don't even know our own mess. Do you know that I talk to teens all the time around the country and they don't even know like what's wrong or anything. I don't know, God is good, he loves me, yay. They are not aware of his heart. This kid is not even aware of his need. Listen to the next line. It says this. It says that. Jesus says, why do you call me good? You know the commandments, do not kill, do not commit adultery. He names off all these commandments. He says, teacher, all of these things I've done from my youth. Like Jesus, I've got this handled. How many times do we feel like that in our lives? Like I got this. I'm, he's a good kid. And I'm saying that to a group of people that are, a lot of you guys are good kids. You know, like, you know, like you watch this, he smoked heroin from the third grade. That's not, I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm on 
I'm doing all right. I might have some lust, or I might do this or that, like, but I'm, I'm doing all right. I'll let you know, God, like, when I need you, but I got this handled. But in the meantime, you can help me do what I want to do, but I got this. And there's more. Because when we, when we feel like that, we don't even know our need for a Savior. We can start thinking that we're good on our own. And I have friends, and I say that because it's me too. I had a group of friends of, of mine, and we were hanging out, and Miley Cyrus came on Saturday Night Live just recently. And everyone in the room, right, Miley came on. She was being interviewed in the whole room. Youth ministers, holy people were like, oh, Miley, oh. Like, she, let's stick out your tongue. Like, get her off, turn the channel. She's, like, just ripping her down. And one of the girls had the courage in the room to stand up and say, you know what, guys, Miley might be doing something. I'm not here, like, drinking the Miley Cyrus Kool-Aid. Okay, people, I'm not, like, please don't. I'm not wearing the T-shirt, okay. But, like, this girl stood up in the room, and she was like, she's like, you know what, she's just looking for love, just like all of us, just looking for it in the wrong place. Like, sometimes we think that our stuff doesn't stink. When I start looking, because you know what, guys, people love me. Like, I'm saying that. Like, I, I love you all. Like, you've been so good to me this weekend, and there are days that I feel really good about myself. There are days that I preach the gospel, like I travel, do this, I do this for you, God. And then there are moments in God's mercy that he gets to see my heart. And those places where I care more about Facebook and what hashtag I use and how many people are following me than him. And when I read scripture and it says, be blameless in my sight, be righteous in me, be holy. And I see how many times that it's all about me. And we need, we need to repent in here, people. We need to repent because we don't have his heart. And I'm not saying that because we got to whip ourselves, but the reality is our need for him, and that's true for my own life. And the beauty of this gospel is that this kid, this kid doesn't even get it. He's kind of clueless. And the beauty of it, look, listen to this ne next line, but Jesus looked at him and loved him. <laughs> the God of the universe sees this kid who's clueless, just like me, sometimes doesn't get it right, is stumbling, has no idea of his own mess. He stands there and Jesus looks at him and loves him because he's already saved him. He's already going to the cross for him. He's already carved his name in his heart. And that's the beauty of this whole gospel, right? There's a picture right here of, this is by uh, an artist, a, a German um, Hoffman is the artist's name. But I love this picture because this is the rich young man with Jesus. And look, Jesus is looking at him and the rich young man's turned away. And how many times is that, that us in our lives? Like God loving us and us so revolved in our world and our life and wanting it easy and Facebook and, and, I, and all these things that we don't even see him. And some of us here, maybe God looking at us, but we're so hiding behind all of our successes and our, and our resumes, afraid that if he, he looks past that, he won't want what he sees. So afraid to let him love us. You ever get like that? Like sometimes I'm afraid of letting God just love me and my brokenness. And I just, just turn away to the world, you know. But the beauty of this gospel message, and I need you to hear this, is that Jesus answers his cry. He answers his desire. He slides in and says, God, I want to know answers. I want to know what the meaning is in my life. I want to know you. I want to, and Jesus tells him exactly that. He doesn't say, you're you got to know. He goes right into the answer. This is what he says. Listen to this. This is awesome. Teacher, all these things I have observed that he looks at him with love and he gives him the answer. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is it. You lack one thing. Go sell what you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. And the kid walks away sad. This is the moment in a movie where, like, the music kind of comes up. Like, you're giving the climactic moment. The music's in the background. He's like, tell me what to do, Jesus. And Jesus is like, do this. And he's like, I'm doing it. And then he's like, this is the time. And he says, you want it, you want it all? Come follow me. See, what's happening, if, if, you, if you listen to what Jesus says, is he only read off about seven of the commandments. If you read off, he says, do not commit adultery, do not, all these, but he doesn't read off the first three, okay? What's happening here theologically is Christ is leading him to the very place of his heart, the very place where he says, you want freedom, you want life, I want everything. And the first three commandments in the Jewish law, they had two tablets, okay? On the right, on the right one, or the, yeah, left one, 
If you're facing on the left tablet, it would have the first three because those are the most important. Love God, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's not the commandment. Love your God with no other idols, right? No other idols. You'll have no other, no other idols, idols than me. I'm it. And he goes to the first three and the other ones are on the right side. Jesus is, is leaning him in to say, I want you to give, not that stuff is bad, but this kid wants the stuff more than he wants him. And some of you here like idols. <laughs> Mary, we don't have idols in our culture. Like, you know, idols were in the Old Testament, these golden calves, right, that used to worship different gods. And, and I want to just tell you that we have just different idols today. Millions of dollars are spent on media and, and our lives for the idols. I had a friend, um, there, there's actually programs for people that are addicted to social media. <laughs> Addicted to like their own idol of themselves. I know you think that's crazy, but some people that can't turn it off because they're just so consumed. We have thousands of people in the Old Testament that used to go and worship false gods and go into huge stadiums to worship. And now we just do that in a big sports arena and we call it by a different name. I want to play this video real quick for you. There's a video just to Let see. Let me if tell you something. If you took away the money, if you took away the fame, the spotlight, if you took away the lifestyle, all the things that come with it. If you took away all the flash. What would you have left? Everything. What's your everything? Come on, you. Shh. I'm being silly. Like, I know, I know that some of you are like, yeah, 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 but I want you to go into your heart. Because those of us who are cheering, we have everything that aren't him. I want you to get into your heart tonight about what's your everything. What's the one thing that Jesus says to me? You want to follow me? Because what he's asking for is you give me your one thing so I can be your everything. What's your, what, what's, what's your, what is it? Is that, is that the Lord? Because in my life, it wasn't him. In my life in high school, I went to these conferences many, many times, but I was still living in the world. Right? And I had this, this superficial outgoing thing where on the outside it looked great, but on the inside I was a mess. I struggled with depression. I never thought that I was good enough. And I thought I could just earn his love by doing all the right things and saying, yes, Lord. And I went to one of these conferences just like you. And I was sitting in the front row, I'll never forget it, I was sitting right in the front row like you. Hi. This girl got on stage and she started preaching the gospel. A Carmelite nun, not a girl. <laughs> she had a full habit on, rosary to the floor, it was like she walked in, it was like you'd hear like a western, the door open, and she was like, we're talking about Jesus, you know. Something stirred in my heart, man. And I, I ran up to her with questions about the church about homosexuality, about all these issues. I struggled with the church. God isn't afraid of your questions. And as I ran up to her with a million questions in the church and all of this mess that no one saw, I mean, if, if I lived in that day, I would have been a cutter. I was just so depressed, so messed up, but on the outside, I had everything together. I was applauding just like all you guys, testify. And I said it because I love that. <laughs> I love you all. And there was this, this moment, she comes up and I asked her a million questions and she, she said this. She said, Mary, keep praying, it's so beautiful. Your faith is so beautiful. And I'm like, what? The Catholic Church? Like, I went to Catholic school my whole life, people, in uniforms, therapy, all right? Like, like seriously, it was like, are you kidding me? The Catholic Church is the most beautiful. And she just kept talking and she invited me to come visit these nuns. 
And I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about him. And I, I went off to St. Louis, true story, I didn't tell any of my friends because there was something that I hungered for that the world cannot give you. There was something that I desired that basketball shoes are not going to do it. And I had, I had dug that well. I had gone to the parties. I had hooked up. I had done all these things. And I was miserable in a wreck. But I had the happy face on. And I went to this place scared to death. I walked into this big chapel. You can hear my feet clicking. We walked into this room, opened the door, and there's a tabernacle at the end of the hallway. And she knelt down and said, say hello to Jesus. The God who is, who's here, who wants you. And I was like, hey, buddy. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to reach out to him. But something in my heart started moving that weekend. You know what, people that are alive and passionate about something, I mean, these nuns were like, their, their veils were like flowing in the wind. And it was like the sound of I mean, everything about them. And they had no man and no money and none of all of this stuff. And they were more free than I could ever imagine. And there was another young lady who was discerning religious life. I'll never forget this moment. I'm sitting in this room and we're, sh we're shared a room. And she burst into my room sobbing, saying, I, I want Jesus. I want him more than anything in the world. I don't care what he asks. I don't care what he wants. Like, he is my everything. And she's like, I, she's snotting and crying. And, this, and I am like in this moment of her prayer. I'm like, what is going on? And she's just like, I love him. I want him. And tears start coming out of my face because I don't know that love. I'm not willing to give my life for it. I can't even give him my one thing. I can't even give him drinking. I was struggling right there because I didn't want to be different than everybody else. I left that week and I, I drove home four hours in silence. And I was like, God, I want to know you like that. And God just, he's like a ninja. He like, <laughs> into my life. Yeah, it's okay, you can laugh a little bit. I know I've been hushing you a little bit. But like he came into my life in a profound way and I fell in love with him. I mean, what makes people do that? I remember thinking in the car, like, what makes a girl cry sobbing who I don't know because she loves Jesus? What causes these martyrs to give their lives? It's not a person. It's not a philosophy. I mean, excuse me. It's not a philosophy. It's a person named Jesus Christ who's alive. I mean, St. Paul says this. St. Paul says this. I call it all. He says, uh, I'll, I'll use a nice word, dung. Everything done. Dung, right? Poop. Excuse my language. That's what he uses this, this strong term. Everything I count is from knowing Jesus. He's the only thing I want to know. He's it. And I don't know what that one thing is for you. I don't know what that one thing is that you have in your life, in your heart. Some of you, maybe it's a sin. Maybe for you, it's like I've been holding on to this sin and I'm still holding on to it. It's pornography, it's cutting, it's fear. Maybe for some of you, it's your image. Maybe some of you, it's complacency, like, well, I'm just, God's okay, but I don't want to get out of the, you know, I'm just fine. Maybe God's just saying, man, would you, would, you, would you get up? Would you fight? Would you shake yourself up a little bit? Stop being just there. Some of you, maybe it's your wounds. You know, for me, for a long time, I was addicted to my wounds. Addicted to the lies that I was like, no, 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 I'm broken. That's who I am. And Jesus is like, no. You gotta, will, you give, will you give me your brokenness so I can give you my life? What's the one thing that God is asking you today to give to him? Because he wants to start anew. And I don't know what that is. I'm just going to read, and I know we're going low on time, but you just hang with me on this. There's a beautiful story by C.S. Lewis. I love it so much because it's the story of our journey. Of the guy that's covered up with so much stuff in Aslan, who's, who's the lion, who's a symbol of Christ, comes and asks him to take off his layers so he could be made new. And listen to what he says. I'm going to read this real quick and then we're going to finish up. But the water was as clear as anything I thought if I could get into it. But the, the lion told me I had to undress first. I told them that I couldn't undress because I didn't have any clothes on, but suddenly I realized that I was a dragon, and dragons are scaly sort of things. 
with snakes that can cast off their skins. So I scratched myself and peeled, trying to peel off every layer, but it was of no use. It tells you throughout the whole story, it's a long story, but each time he goes in, he's trying to peel off and fix himself. He's trying to, how many times have you gone to confession with the same sin over and over again? And this is the beauty at the end. The lion said, you will have to let me undress you. I was afraid of his claws because I was pretty near desperate, but I was pretty near desperate by now. The very first tear, this is Christ taking off our layers, taking off our sin. This is what Christ does on the cross. He takes it from us on himself so that we can be set free. This is the Savior that we can't do it on our own. It's not about sin management. It's like, I need you to help me. And he keeps going on and slowly but surely, like he tears off his skin one by one. It was painful and it was hard. And at this moment, then he caught hold of me and I didn't think I could do it. And he threw me back into the water. It smarted, I love that, it smarted like anything for just a moment. But after that, it was perfectly delicious because I was swimming and splashing and I found the pain had gone away and I saw why. I had turned into a boy again. God just wants to make us his own again and take off all those layers of our heart. And this is the beauty, guys. I want you to know that this is the love of Christ. I want you to all look at me for a second. We're going to sing a song like, like, this is the love of Jesus Christ. He wants to make you new. He wants to make you something more than you are. He wants to rise you from the dead. And he wants to do it right here. But here's the thing. He asks Aslan to do it for him. He can't do it on his own. He has to give permission. He has to say his yes, just like this young man. He has to say, like, I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to give my life and move on. And if you're here today and you're like, I don't know if I can, I'm going to tell you that he can give you the grace right now if we just call out. I had a young girl, and I'm just going to end with this story. I had a young girl. It's my favorite experience of last a couple of years ago in ministry, this young girl comes up to me and she's crying. I just gave this great keynote. It was epic. <laughs> she came up sobbing, just like this on a Saturday night. I talked about her, about Peter getting out of the boat, about living a new life for Jesus Christ. And she was moved. And she came up and she had the snotty tears, like the, <laughs> like, ugly cry. And I didn't know what she was going to say because on this face, I travel around the country and there's a lot of junk out there. I didn't know if there would be like abuse. I didn't know if it would be like a sexual addiction. I didn't know if there would be like all these things with her parents or divorce or loneliness or all these various sins. Like I didn't know what to expect that I'm crying out to God, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, please, please show up. And she's like, Mary, Mary. And she's crying. I'm like, oh my God, please God, show up. I need you right now, God, please. And she's crying and she's crying. And then she stops and she's like, and I'm like, yeah, come on, baby. You could do this. You could do this. It's a true story, you guys. It was the most beautiful moment. I'm like calling her out of the boat. I'm calling her to give her life to Christ. And in this moment, she's stops and she's like I don't I'm like come on I don't know how to get out of the boat yeah I was like what she's like she's crying I don't know how to get out of the boat like I want to live that life do you guys have those moments like I want you to love Jesus I want you to love him more than anything in the whole world. I want you to see him in the glory of who he is and say, I want him and I want you to be with me on that journey because I can't do it alone. I need you out there, but you know what? If you're here today, the beauty of that moment is she didn't know how. I don't know how. But if we could just cry out to God today, Canada, Toronto, rise. If we could just cry out to say, God, I need you. Would you be willing to cry out with me? Would you be willing? No, no, no. Like, I mean, now this is the time you can say testify. It's okay. I know I shush you, but this is the time that you can say, okay, now this is, this is, she's encouraging us. This is good. Like, this is the time. Like, would you be willing today at this moment to really cry out and say, God, I need you to come.
Would you be willing? Because I'm just telling you right now, I know the glory of God has come and all we got to do is cry out. So close your eyes with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, I want just you to come in this song and your glory that you would come and teach us our need for you. That we can sing this song like we've never sang any song in the world. That we can sing this song like we are calling out for a Savior because we need you here tonight. And I declare by the blood of Jesus Christ that you died for our sins, that you came and gave your life for us to live again. And we call upon the Holy Spirit and the grace right now that tonight we will rise in your name, Jesus Christ, because you are the King of Kings. And we know that you have set us free. Heavenly Father, just sing this song with me.